let's implement some basic authorization because currently any user can edit and view any resource. For example, these transactions and categories here have been created by my main user. But if I log out and create a new user and log in, I still see all of those transactions and all of those categories, which is not good. We should add restrictions so that the user is only able to manage the resources that the user created and not be able to see any other user stuff like receipts, transactions, categories, etc. There are multiple ways to implement authorization and tenancy in general. My implementation is not the only way. It really depends on a few factors like the size of the application, the complexity, and so on. Our application is small and simple, so we're going to build a simple authorization. The most basic implementation of authorization is to simply add user ID check in all the queries and compare it to the currently logged in user's ID. For example, in the category controller within the load method here, where we call the get paginated categories, we can pass the currently logged in user's ID. So something like request get attribute user get ID. And then within this method, we would accept the user ID and we would add the where condition here. So we would do where C user equals user. And let's add the parameter here. So we'll do user user ID. This should now only load the categories that belong to this user. Let's test this out quick. So let's open the browser. Let's refresh the page. And sure enough, we don't see any more categories because there are no categories associated with this new user. Let's create a new category here. Test. And sure enough, we see this category. So this is the most basic implementation of it. And this works. But the problem with it is that we would have to add this condition to every single query. And it would be easy to forget to add it to some of the queries that needed, which would result in data leakage. There is a better way to do this, and it's called Doctrine Filters, which allows us to define the filter one time and register it globally. Doctrine ORM filters allow us to add SQL to the conditional clauses of queries, regardless of where the SQL is generated from. It basically filters out the entities and prevents filtered entities from being hydrated. There is an example here in the documentation illustrating how we can create a filter class. It needs to extend the base SQL filter class and implement the add filter constraint method. This method gets the class metadata of the entity as the first argument and the table alias as the second. There are a couple of rules that need to be followed when using filters as described in here. The first rule is that parameters for the query should be set on the filter object by SQL filter set parameter before the filter is used by the ORM. So basically we should not set the parameters inside this method. And the second rule is that the filter must be deterministic. Then if we scroll down here, we see an example on how we can add this filter to our ORM. So basically we need to call the add filter method on the ORM configuration and register this filter. So let's create the filter class. Let's go back to the code, open project files. I'll create a new directory here called filters. And in here we'll create a new class called user filter. Let's extend the SQL filter and let's implement the add filter constraint method. Then in here, we're going to return a conditional check where we can compare the user ID of the table alias to the given user ID parameter. So we can do something like return target table alias dot user ID equals, and we'll use the get parameter method to get the user ID parameter, which will handle the proper quoting. So this right here is the user ID column on the table. And this right here is the user ID parameter that will be passed into this filter. So this will basically be the currently logged in users ID. Now we need to register this in our doctrine configuration. So let's open container bindings and add the filter in our ORM configuration. So we have the ORM config in here. So we'll do ORM config add filter. We'll call this user and pass the user filter class name as the second argument. Next, we need to enable the filter on the entity manager and pass down the currently logged in user ID as a parameter. So for now, we'll do that from the controller. So let's open the category controller. And right here, we can do something like this entity manager service, get filters, enable user, because that's what we called our filter when we registered it in the container bindings. And then we'll set the parameter here. We need to pass the currently logged in users ID as the parameter. So we'll do user ID equals to this. 
let's format the code we can remove the user id from this method so let's remove it from here and we can get rid of this where condition as well now as you can see we no longer have this specific where condition in our get paginated categories query but that should automatically be added through that filter that we enabled in the controller so let's open the browser now let's refresh the page and as you can see we still see only one category we can actually inspect the query here so let's open clockwork switch to the database and as you can see the where clause with the user id is automatically added to these queries now this also means that this filter will also be added to all the queries afterwards once we enable it on the entity manager level however i don't like doing this on the controller level we should already have the filters enabled globally before hitting the controller I think putting this into a middleware makes sense. So let's take this code from the controller and we can either create a new middleware, something like authorized middleware, or we could add this logic within the existing auth middleware. We already have the auth middleware, which already has the user instance right here and that passes along the requests. So we can add this logic in here as well. We can paste that code in here. We can inject the entity manager service. So we'll do private read only entity manager service interface we can change this to just user get id and i think this looks good so let's open the browser to test this out let's refresh the page and sure enough we only see the single category let's try to inspect element here and change the id of the category to something else that doesn't belong to us so i have another category that was created by my original user with id2 so if I click on delete here without the proper authorization, it would essentially delete that category that doesn't belong to this user, even though we don't see that category here. But with the proper authorization that automatically adds this filter to all the queries should filter that out and not even allow the loading of that entity. So if I click on delete, we see that we get resource not found error because it's returning 404. If we inspect the clockwork here and switch to the database, we see that it's trying to load from the categories where the ID is 2 and the user ID is 215. And that's the ID of the currently logged in user. And this category does not belong to this user because this category was created by my other user. That's why we're getting this 404 resource not found. As a reminder, that 404 is being triggered from the route entity binding strategy. We have it right here where we try to load the entity by the entity ID. And if the entity is not found, we trigger the 404. Great, so let's actually improve our auth middleware just a little bit. We can extract this logic into entity manager service itself. So instead of doing get filters, enable and set parameter, what we can do is that we can simplify this and simply call something like enable user auth filter and pass the user ID this way. We can create this method on the interface. So we'll take the user ID as an argument and this will return nothing. Let's open our entity manager service and provide the implementation for that method. And we'll paste in the code that we copied. Now in here, we can simply do this, get filters, enable user set parameter and pass user ID this way. And we should be good to go great let's go back to the browser and test this out to make sure that it still works let's refresh the page that still works let's go to the transactions page and we're getting an error let's inspect what the error is so the error states that the column user id is not found on r2 so that's the receipts table which makes sense because it is adding the filter to all the queries on all the entities and the receipts table does not have user relationship receipt belongs to the transaction not to the user to fix this, what we can do is that we can add the filter only to those entities that have the user or have the owner. We can do this by introducing some sort of interface that the entities with the user relationship can implement. We can call this interface something like ownable interface. So let's open our contracts. Let's create a new contract here. We'll call it ownable interface. And we can also add a method here that will return the proper user instance or the owner instance of that entity. So we'll do public function get user and this will return user interface. Now we can implement this interface within the transaction and category entities. So let's open the category entity. We'll implement it 
in here let's import this class and we already have the get user method on the category entity so we're good by just implementing that interface we can do the same on the transaction entity so let's open that implement ownable interface and again we have the get user method on the transaction entity as well then we need to adjust our user filter here to only do this for classes that implement that ownable interface so we basically need to check if the target entity implements the ownable interface we can actually get the reflection class instance from this class metadata object so we can do something like if target entity get reflection class implements interface and will provide ownable interface class name only then do this thing otherwise do nothing so actually let's negate this so if the target entity does not implement the ownable interface then we'll simply return blank otherwise we'll add this filter let's add the string as the return type here and we should be able to test this out so let's go back to the browser let's refresh the transactions page and sure enough now our transactions page loads without errors and we don't see any transactions because all those transactions belong to another user we go back to the categories we again see that single category go back to the transactions let's create a new transaction here so we'll do test we'll set some date here enter amount select the category and as you can see even the drop down only loads the single category that belongs to this user and this all works seamlessly because that filter is applied behind the scenes to all those queries so let's select that test click create and sure enough that works we can mark this as reviewed mark it as not reviewed we can edit it and that works as well now there may be time where we may want to check if a specific given user entity can manage another specific entity right now this all works around the currently logged in user but what if we wanted to check if any given user can manage a specific transaction or a category we can do this by introducing a new method something like can manage within the user entity so let's open the user entity add a new method here called public function can manage and this will accept the ownable interface entity as an argument and will return boolean true or false if the given user can manage this entity and the check here is pretty simple we can do return this get id equals to entity get user get id so we're checking if the id of this user entity whatever the object that is is equal to the id of the ownable interface entity so if this is a transaction entity we're checking if this user object id equals to the transaction user id so with this method we can basically load any user entity from the database and check if that user can manage any transaction entity or any category entity or any entity that implements this ownable interface all right there is one change that i made behind the scenes on the transaction entity that i forgot to mention and that is this cascade option with remove so in the receipts relationship i added the cascade remove argument here because it was throwing an error when trying to delete a transaction that had some receipts on it so if you face similar errors just add this cascade here that way whenever the transaction is deleted it will also delete all the associated receipts all right another thing that i want you to note is that in the receipt controller we have this additional authorization check here where we're comparing the id of the transaction from the receipt to the transaction id we're basically ensuring here that the receipt belongs to the transaction because receipt has no user relationship it has a reference to the transaction and if user is playing games and passing the id of a receipt that does not belong to them we can respond with a proper error laravel does this by using policies but we won't go that far since our application is pretty simple and i'm okay with having this check here since we only do it two times also please note that if you're building raw queries then you will have to add the authorization part yourself for example if i were to get the connection from the entity manager and run the update query manually it is not going to add the enabled filters on it you will have to add the work conditions yourself manually to ensure that it's updating the correct records but if you use entities and regular orm query builder and stuff then the filters should automatically be applied so this is it for this video thanks for watching please hit the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so until next time happy coding